The concept of liminality is somewhat difficult to define. Broadly speaking, it refers to transitional spaces existing in the middle of two more important places. They are transient in nature, a fleeting part of our journey, seen and then immediately forgotten. In these liminal spaces, we hover at a threshold, a state of ambiguity, not quite in, not quite out, but somewhere in the middle. There's an unsettling familiarity. It's almost real, but we cannot escape a sense that something is ever so slightly off somehow. In this maze, we find ourselves in one of these places. There's no clear direction, just a faceless character wandering the halls. The rules of reality in this maze are different. Floating objects flip the world upside down. Strange images are plastered over the brick walls. The occasional rat does little to soothe this feeling of isolation and emptiness. At the end of the maze lies a solitary, floating, yellow smiley face. But this is a deceptive shape. There is no reward for completing the maze, no escape from its halls. Instead, the maze collapses and is instantly replaced with yet another maze. It's a cycle that will continue forever. This scene is a screensaver, a relic of past computer technology. Screensavers were a necessity to prevent screen burn-in on old cathode ray tube monitors. If an individual image was held idle on one of these screens for too long, a permanent etching would be created, which would persist even as other images were shown. To combat this effect, the screensaver was developed, named because they would literally save the screen from burn-in. By showing new images, the monitor would be protected from damage. Screensavers, at their very core, are liminal devices. In this state, the computer is neither completely active nor completely off, residing in a suspended, idle mode. Screensavers fill this void. Their purpose is to occupy screen space, to be there but not noticed, to be present but unintrusive. And it's this very purpose that makes them uniquely positioned to be a case study in liminality, a lens through which to explore the very concept. So join me as we take a journey back in time to discover how the screensaver became an underrated example of liminality. The early history of screensavers is somewhat murky. As far back as 1977, some Atari games would cycle the colors when left idle for long enough. However, the term screensaver first emerged in 1983 with a program named Screensave.com. It was written by John Socha for MS-DOS, a command line operating system developed by Microsoft. This screensaver would simply dim the screen after a few minutes of inactivity. The Apple Lisa computer had a similar feature. Logically, this should have been as far as screensavers ever went. Preventing burn-in doesn't require anything beyond turning the monitor dark. Yet, there must have been some sort of allure to the idea of visuals being shown during idle time. In May of 1986, Bob Siegel created Eye, one of the very first animated screensavers. Instead of a blank screen, Eye presents a disembodied eye looking around. If you disturb it by pressing a key, the pupil dilates and makes an angry noise. While Eye is fairly simple, it introduced visual elements that would set the tone for future screensavers. Suspended in an endless void, the unblinking eye created an unsettling, almost hypnotic effect. The surrealism was partly necessitated by the era's limited graphical technology. In fact, many early MS-DOS screensavers were initially conceived of as tech demos, blurring the line between functionality and digital art. They served as an excuse to make something cool on the computer, something that didn't have rigid requirements. The technological limits led naturally to a distinct theme found in many early screensavers, abstract geometric patterns. Screensavers like 1987's Tunnel by Dan Butterfield is a simple example with its concentric color gradients. Dazzle by Michael Peter Engelbright takes a busier approach, displaying shifting kaleidoscopic patterns. The following year, Plasma was released, generating a hue cycling tie-dye image. It even saved the picture for future use. A highlight from the MS-DOS era is Terry Dorff's 1988 creation Lumen. It produces the illusion of three-dimensional boxes and shapes, growing and morphing in real time. There is some similarity to 20th century abstract art. The images displayed are reminiscent of Joseph Albers, Piet Mondrian, or Frank Stella. However, it's extended into the temporal realm. These boxes evolve over time, the art isn't static. But it also never really goes anywhere either. It's an infinite progression towards nothing. Tragically, Dorff's murder in 1991 makes Lumen one of his few remaining creations, a highlight of the 1980s geometric screensavers. 
Not every screensaver was full of color, however. Kevin Stokes' intermission took a simpler approach. The tiny white points create the illusion that we're on a spaceship, zipping past stars at high speed. It is clearly inspired by Star Wars hyperspace or Star Trek's warp speed. The effect is simple, but instantly memorable as a solid screensaver. So solid, in fact, that it wasn't long until it was copied by someone much bigger. On October 8, 1990, Microsoft introduced its first official screensavers, designed for the recently released Windows 3.0. They were found within the standalone Microsoft Entertainment Pack for a price of $39.95. Included was Stars, a nearly identical replica of Intermission. It's an early example of a trend that would continue for years, screensaver developers taking influence from others, sometimes to the extent of blatant copying. As such, none of Microsoft Entertainment Pack's screensavers were particularly innovative. It's worth mentioning that this was the first time that the game Microsoft Minesweeper was publicly released, though even this took heavy inspiration from a seven-year-old game named Mind Out. While geometrically inspired images may be beautiful, they don't quite seem liminal. They're too abstract, there's not a physical connection for us to latch onto. And it is here that we discover a truth of liminality. For an image to be liminal, there must be some sort of connection to a real-life visual concept, something that grounds us a bit. If not, our brains are content to interpret them as abstract ideas, and we don't get that sense of unease. There are a few screensavers from the 80s that do approach this territory. The technological constraints of the time inadvertently sculpted an aesthetic that would endure, stark colors against dark, textureless backgrounds. We saw this in Eye. Another is 1989's Bug Fry. Here, a bug zapper hangs ominously, luring flies to their eventual annihilation. These visuals feel almost dreamlike, real but not quite, existing in a space between realistic and abstract. This aesthetic would be more deeply explored later that year with the arrival of After Dark. It would truly revolutionize the screensaver paradigm. The program was built upon a simpler foundation called Magic Screensaver. It was initially released for the Macintosh. After much effort, I was unfortunately unable to find a completely working disk image of it. Thankfully, there was an additional release for Windows in 1990, and this version is much more well known. For the low, low price of $49.95, you could install no fewer than 35 different screensavers on your Windows 3.1 computer. It is here that the empty, pitch black aesthetic is explored more deeply. Fish swim in a simulated aquarium. Eyes open and close in the darkness, watching us from afar. Cats explore the screen, chasing butterflies. Otherworldly landscapes are generated again and again. But of all these, the strangest and most famous is the flying toasters. In the darkness, we watch toasters with wings on a journey to who knows where. Pieces of toast float alongside them. There is even an option to decide how well done the toast is. The end result is an especially memorable screensaver. I guarantee that some of you watching right now are feeling a wave of nostalgia because you haven't seen the flying toasters in years. Other screensavers from After Dark continued the geometric tradition. Some of these are downright mesmerizing. Spiral Gyra generates sequences of multicolored lines which develop the illusion of motion. Rose is another highlight. Pointillist rainbow spirals spin and morph, producing beautiful curved shapes. Stained glass takes a different approach, containing more complex lines, shapes, and duplications. The result is a very wide variety of possibilities. Other, simpler examples include a basic fluid simulation called Ripple, and waves with shifting hues in Satori. After Dark is also notable because it included several screensavers that affected the desktop. As far as I can tell, the 1989 Macintosh version was the first to ever do this, and it was extended in the Windows version. Down the drain causes your entire desktop to swirl down the sink, programs, icons, and all. Can of worms causes the screen to be slowly eaten by tiny bugs until little remains. String theory slowly covers the screen with beams of light. It's probably hard to underestimate the influence of After Dark on the aesthetics of future screensavers. It had a level of passion, a level of oddness that hadn't really been seen before. And while it did push the geometric side forward, it's more notable because it committed to the idea that screensavers could be anything. They could be bold, confusing, funny, and maybe just a little bit surreal. Other screensaver packs were released in the shadow of After Dark. Microsoft created two additional entertainment packs in 1991. Highlights include Spiderweb, in which a web is constructed on screen. 
chomp in which the desktop is slowly eaten away, oriental rug which created pointillist geometric patterns, and divide and conquer in which the desktop is split into smaller and smaller tiles. However, Microsoft was about to make a much more impactful change, one that would usher in a new era. To this point, all of the screensavers we've looked at were standalone products, either paid, shareware, or free. But with the release of Windows 3.1 in April of 1992, screensavers were included natively within the Windows operating system. These screensavers were relatively conservative, even compared to the entertainment packs. Mystify had colored polygons bouncing around the screen, and Starfield Simulation was a version of Stars. The most notable new addition was Flying Windows, which was very similar to Starfield Simulation, but with multicolored Windows logos instead. The built-in screensavers were, frankly, pretty simple and somewhat dull. But all this would change with the release of Windows 95. The volume and variety of included Windows screensavers increased dramatically, and for the first time, Windows had a signature, the 3D maze. This screensaver elevated the genre to new heights in terms of graphical complexity. The improved sense of physical space enabled 3D Maze to be another truly liminal screensaver. And it shows us another core concept of liminality, a sense of loneliness. It feels as if it's a precursor to the back rooms, infinite hallways, twists and turns, and a dreadful knowledge that, no matter what, we aren't finding a way out of this place. When I watch the maze, I get a profound feeling of isolation a fear that no one else exists in the world except for me. Another innovation of Windows 95 was the integration of real-life photographs into screensaver design. This had been done at least once before. In 1991, a programmer named D. Stuart Riffle made a DOS screensaver called bushsave.exe. Launching it shows none other than the floating head of George H.W. Bush suspended in a black void. Read my lip. Microsoft took a less political approach, opting instead for thematic screensavers. But these are weird in their own way. Baseball shows a diamond sitting on the black void. Photographs of players doing various actions fade in and out of the empty space. There's also snowboarding, showing snowboarders doing various tricks. This one is notable for its particularly strange sound design. The innocuous images are accompanied by some oddly ominous noises. What does this have to do with snowboarding? The Golden Era was another unusual creation. It has a man reading a newspaper while tapping his foot. In the background, we see a sequence of disconnected images and sounds, creating a disjointed, dreamlike narrative. The images feel a bit surreal. As it turns out, surrealism is a common tendency of photograph-based screensavers. Another example is the horses screensaver. It's simply a slideshow of pictures of horses. There's nothing exactly wrong with these pictures, but it's hard to escape the sense that they aren't quite right either. They're ever so slightly off kilter, a tiny bit unreal. This effect is even more pronounced in a Windows 98 Plus screensaver called World Traveler. Some of these images feel downright uncomfortable. It's almost difficult to believe that these are photographs of actual places. And it is here that once again, we feel that sense of loneliness as if we're the only one here existing in a world devoid of sentient life. Once again, this sense of surrealism can be partially explained by the technology. The resolution and number of available colors on monitors was limited, thus forcing any real-life image to be merely a crude approximation. The Horror Channel screensaver exemplified this, a grainy castle on a mountaintop, a dark dungeon with cobwebs, a mysterious tower in the distance with a darkened figure atop it. The photograph screensavers were a new aesthetic category, and they represented one of the major contributions of Microsoft in the late 90s. But there were also screensavers that were less creepy. Electronic components float over a circuit board on inside your computer, with various beeping sound effects. Dangerous creatures display sharks and rays swimming around the screen. Space has an astronaut and various pieces of equipment floating among the stars. Jungle displays various plants and animals. Bugs and nature both let us watch insects walk across the forest floor. Fashion lets us see some, well, fashion. Despite the trend towards more realistic depictions, there are other screensavers of the time which maintain the geometric concepts. One such example is 3D pipes, where we watch meaningless plumbing generate in real time. 
These pipes have random shapes, different colors, and even different joint types. If you want a flexible, bendy type of pipe, that's available too. There's even the option to set your own pipe texture. Eventually, the screen resets and starts over. We also have 3D flower box and 3D flying objects, both of which have various types of 3D geometry morph as they bounce around the screen. These are much smoother and more detailed than previous 3D screensavers. But none of these is quite as interesting as organic art, included in Windows 98 Plus. Organic art isn't so much a screensaver as it is a screensaver engine, boasting an impressive array of 31 different scenes. Each features dynamic 3D geometry against a pre-rendered background, showcasing a remarkable diversity of possibilities. It's actually possible to install Organic Art Deluxe if users want to make their own screensavers. There are options to change the background, the shape, the way it moves, the way it morphs, the number of objects, the texture, and even the shading. There are truly some bizarre possibilities, especially in the backdrop imagery. We find stark alien landscapes beckoning to be explored. There are strange tubes going into something resembling a wormhole. Several are M.C. Escher-inspired staircases, and there's a 3D scene of cubes that would fit right in with Mark 101. As expected, some of these images are more organic in nature. We see fleshy tubes, perhaps an image of intestines. But it gets even weirder. There's a rendering of an amorphous bone material and a 3D rendered skeleton, one that appears to be the view from inside of a spinal column. And then there's, well, whatever this is, perhaps a skull of some kind. And as we explore these background images, we discover that there's a rather odd obsession with heads, rows of them in a line missing their eyes, an army of people staring at us in some green space, a vast number of them lying down in a circle, heads with some sort of tail attached to them. Why are there so many images of heads with tails? Why are they surrounding a pink sphere? What are these things? And finally, there's an image called zoo.gif. We see four additional heads, but this time they're real. Is this a portrait of the creator, William Latham? It's hard to know for sure. In terms of pure oddity, organic art represents one of the heights of screensaver creativity. It's one of the many standouts of the 1990s, which was a golden age for the medium. So many interesting ideas were developed by so many people, and screensavers were brought to a wider audience than ever before. What innovations would be seen in the 2000s? How far could the screensaver medium be pushed? In the late 90s, it felt nearly limitless. But unfortunately, Y2K marked the beginning of the screensaver's gradual descent into obscurity. LCD screens were not affected by burn-in, and they were becoming increasingly popular. By the end of 2003, more LCD screens were sold than CRTs. As a result, the screensaver became more and more of an afterthought in Windows operating systems. Including Microsoft Plus, Windows 95 had 27 official screensavers. Windows 98 dropped to 21. Windows 2000 and XP had 11 screensavers each. Windows Vista had eight. Windows 7 had seven. And as of 2023, there are just six that remain, buried deep within the settings and turned off by default. Long gone are the days of spectacularly surreal and odd screensavers. There is no more 3D maze, no more flying toasters, no more organic art. For the most part, screensavers are a relic of the past, memories of a time gone by. But perhaps that's fitting. The very history of the screensaver is a liminal story, a transitional period of technology, something necessary in the moment but not afterwards, something we noticed but never really stopped to think about, and without us realizing it, they slowly disappeared. One day we looked up, and they were gone. While screensavers were initially designed just to fill up pixels on a screen, they grew to be far more than that. They developed into their own unique art form with evolving tastes, concepts, and ideas. In fact, near the end of the 90s, many screensavers weren't even good at their initial jobs. They had static images that would remain on the screen. Some used relatively complex 3D rendering, causing the hardware to be performing computations when it would have been better off doing nothing. And through it all, there was a persistent aesthetic trend of liminality. Screensavers lingered in a region between off and on, between old technology and new technology, between interesting and boring. Flying toasters, endless mazes, pictures of other worlds. Visual suspended in a static realm, moving but not progressing, evolving towards nothing, morphing within their own temporary world. And we know that moving the mouse would cause them to disappear and we would exit the transitional space, but maybe we'll linger here just a bit longer 
and enjoy this deeply liminal art form, the likes of which may never be seen again. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I know it's a bit different from what I've done in the past, but I had a lot of fun making it, and I hope you had fun watching it. It's a topic I've always had a bit of an interest in, and I decided to just make a video about it. If you want to discuss this more, I'd love to have you on the RGN Discord server. The link is in the description. This has been Retro Gaming Now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.